Hello everybody and welcome to another Squeak Chimp tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these beads and we are going to make either single ones, ones with two holes or ones with three holes. So let's start with the tools. So I'm going to be using this paper bead roller. I will leave a link to it in the description box and this particular size is a two and a half millimetre one. I've also got some glue which is just in that yellow pot. I've also got some cocktail sticks which is what I'm going to be using to glaze my beads with later on. I've got my Vallejo gloss acrylic varnish that I'm going to be painting on. Obviously a trusty paintbrush, couldn't do it without that. And then what you'll see is at the top of these beads I've given them a bit of a subtle gold colour and what I'm going to be doing with that is using this Dovecraft 3D Pearl Effect drops in order to do it. And I've also got this metallic marker in this gorgeous turquoisey, aquary, tealy colour that I'm also going to be using to add some further details to it. And of course I've got a cup of mug, um, a mug of coffee. So grab yours and I will show you how we're going to make these beads. So in order to make this really easy for you, I have come up with this template and I will leave it in uh, the description box below as to where you can find it. And it's um, a really nice piece of paper that you can print as many times as you want. So in order for you to make the bead with one hole, you're going to need one strip. Two holes, you'll need two strips, and obviously three holes, you're going to need three strips. And then running along the top is the strip that has our images on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to clear the way and we're going to cut the template up. So I've got a long pair of scissors and they're um, nice and sharp. Now, one of the questions I get asked a lot and one of the things that people do seem to struggle with is cutting paper templates themselves and if they don't have access to something like a guillotine and what I would say is is just take it slowly and what you're going to do is you're going to cut just inside the coloured line because what you want to be trying to do is to avoid as much as possible getting some of the white on your strip. Now, another thing that I get asked a lot is why is the middle of all of my templates white? And I will tell you the reason for that. It's because it will save you money when it comes to printing them. Because when we roll those beads, the inside of that bead is not visible to anybody. So you do not need colour on it. And so therefore, you are wasting your money by printing that bit out. So I always make them pale. I always make them white. Just leave them as is to save you money. So once we've got our strip, what we can do is we can just chop the ends off so that we haven't got any of those white bits showing. I'll just chop both ends off so that you can see. And there we are, we've got our first strip ready. Okay, so when you're looking at your bead, if you want the inside of your bead to be a similar colour, i.e. not white, what you're going to do is you're going to turn your strip over and you're going to apply, again, just a strip, it doesn't need to be very long, but just a strip of colour to the inside of your bead. Now we can begin rolling our beads. So just as we do as always, we're going to insert the paper into the slot and just roll up. Now these are two beads. So what you want to be doing is making sure that your edges are lining up. So don't rush it, just roll it, enjoy the process. There's no rush when it comes to crafting, just enjoy the process. And steadily roll your piece of paper up keeping the ends nice and straight. And you can see I'm just using my other finger just to make sure those ends are lining up. So just roll, roll, roll. And as we come up to the end, 
what you're going to want to do is, at that point, you're going to want to be applying some glue. So here I'm just using some uh, super tacky PVA glue and I'm applying a small amount. Any excess that you think is on there, just wipe off. You don't honestly need a lot when it comes to sticking normal like copier paper together. So I'm just going to roll that bead and you can see I'm applying even pressure with my two fingers and I'm just getting rid of that excess glue. And then I'm using my palm of my hand again just to apply an even pressure and you can see the excess glue there. So now I've got my first tube ready. Um, I'm just squashing it down on the table just to make sure that it is a tube and that all my ends are nice and flat. So that's a little trick for you. And now what I'm going to do is, although my ends are slightly coloured, I actually want to really intensify that colour because I'm going to have them really visible. So that's where my metallic pen is coming in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just applying a little bit more of that metallic tealy colour just to add some more depth to it. Um, just around the edges, just on the ends, just to give it a bit more depth and you'll see towards the end when we get to glazing what actually happens to that colour. So what I've done now is I have stuck two of the tubes together and this is where we now need to work out where we're going to put our strip on to begin with to ensure that when our bead is finished that image is on the front. So we're going to do it in reverse, we're putting it where we want it wrap it round and we can see that this is where we need that line of the other strip to be when we start to roll our beads. Does that make sense? It will start to make sense when I glue it. So I'm going to apply a bit of glue and I'm going to line it up with roughly where I said. Now you don't want these rolls, these two tubes, to be too stuck together because if you go slightly wrong with this lining up, if they're not completely stuck together, you can give them a little bit of a jiggery rolly and a bit of a change around. So you can see I'm just rolling up. Now I've only applied glue to the beginning and I'm going to apply glue to the end. So I'm just dipping it in some glue that I've got on a bit of scrap paper. I probably put a little bit too much on there. But I'm just going to wipe the rest off with my finger and just stick it down. Now, this is where, if it's not completely dry, you can see that it is um, slightly lined up, but it's maybe not quite where I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll it, just roll it along, and then I have it where I want it to be. And there you go. There is our two hole bead. And I'm just dropped it. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to take our marker and we're just going to add a bit more colour just to create that kind of homogeneous effect with it all. And you can see um, how much it does change the end of that bead. It kind of creates more of um, a, a more completed, a more finished look. And I'm not worried at all about that colour slightly coming up the edges because I actually really want it to. I think it's going to add to the colour of it because it's such a lovely metallic colour. And there we go. There is our two hole bead. So we are now on the home straight. So I have put some of that gloss into this small little um, silicon dish which is really handy just to clean off afterwards and I'm just first of all for my very first layer I'm just applying a thin coat and what you'll find is that some of the colour that we put on the metallic colour starts to bleed just a little bit and I really like the effect of it. So a little bit of it goes on your paintbrush and you sort of swipe it over the whole of it. So just a really thin layer over that first bit. And then what I'm doing at the top here when I finally get it in focus is I'm applying a dab 
is the easiest way to describe it. So I've got some on my paintbrush and I am dabbing it on because what I want to do is to create a really nice seal on the end of those beads. So I'm just going to turn it round and I'm just going to create a dab on it. Um, obviously not going into the hole, but I want to create almost like a domed effect. And I'm just going to go down those holes at the side. And there we go. That's our bead um, glazed for our first round. So once you've given your beads a couple of coats of glaze and they're all dry, what I'm now going to do is just apply that gold finish to the ends. So there's lots and lots of ways of doing this. And today, the way that I've decided to do it and to show you is that I'm taking some of that um, gold pearl drops and I am mixing it with a little bit of the glaze that I'm currently using and I'm just smushing it together um, and just creating a kind of liquid gold but a lot thinner and a lot more translucent than what it was like originally when it was in the bottle because I just want it to be a subtle effect I don't want it to be too much so once it's mixed just emptying my paintbrush because what I want to do is I want to use my flat paintbrush in order to pick up an amount like a little scoop of it and I'm just going to scoop it on so you can see very similar to the way that I did it before I'm just scooping it on just to create a really lovely dome effect and you're just going to work your way round applying it and I find the whole process of glazing beads by hand as opposed to dipping quite meditative. There's something quite nice about that, that slow, that control, the fact that you can really see that glossness um, arrive on the beads. And there we go. That's the way that we're applying that final gold finish effect to our beads so thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this um, the way that you would make the three hole beads is exactly the same and you would make the single hole beads in exactly the same way as well obviously you'd let everything dry and then have fun make bracelets with them make all sorts of jewelry with them and you can see here what it looks like when it's dry um, and it's just a really fun, different way of finishing your beads. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please give us a like and a thumbs up. Leave us a comment and I will see you again for the next one.